Hello, this is David abanek with a brief look at the fundamental accounting equations that underlie three of the four financial statements, including the income statement and the balance sheet. And here, the key difference is between a flow concept and a stock concept. So the income statement is measuring quantities over a period of time, most likely a quarter or a year. Then we get to the end of the year, we have the balance sheet that is a snapshot in time. So that's a stock concept, the stock of these quantities or accounts. So the income statement is accrued revenue minus expenses. Remember we have an accrual concept here, not a cash flow concept. So this is revenue that's recorded when earned minus expenses that are recorded when incurred, irrespective of the actual cash flow movements. If the earned revenue exceeds the incurred expenses, we have a positive net income. Again, for the period, a flow concept. If incurred expenses exceeds earned revenue, we have a net loss again for the period. Then we get to the end of the period, say the end of the fiscal year, as a snapshot in time, the balance sheet must balance. And that is to say, this fundamental equation, you've probably seen it before, assets on the so-called left-hand side of the balance sheet must equal the sum of liabilities plus owner's equity on the right-hand side, so to speak, of the balance sheet. And at first, if you first time you've ever seen this, you may ask, how is it that it magically is always balanced? And that's because it's by design or by definition, the owner's equity fluctuates up and down. And we could restate this maybe more intuitively as the owner's equity is going to equal necessarily assets minus liabilities. You can imagine, what if we consumed as much assets as we needed, the cash, for example, to pay off all of the liabilities? Then whatever would be left over would be the owner's equity. So that's by design as a stock concept. And then just look, let's look at a simplified example here, highly simplified Balance sheet here, assets on the left, if that's 10,000 in assets, that can include some cash. If the liabilities, this could be debt here of 3,000. The owner's equity is going to be what is ever left over, or the residual claim. 10,000 minus 3,000 is owner's equity is 7,000. This ensures that the left-hand side assets of 10,000 necessarily equals liabilities of 3 plus owner's equity of 7 equals 10. So here's the balance in the balance sheet. And then again, highly simplified the income statement because there may be several, there will be several expense line items, but we have revenue of 2000 minus expenses of 500. And unlike the balance sheet where this was at the end of the year, snapshot in time, again, a stock concept. Here we have a flow concept. This is revenue earned and expenses incurred over the period, which you can see here is for the year that happens to end on December 31st. And so we have 2000 minus 500 equals net income of 1500. And now let's see how they link together in the third financial statement which is the statement of retained earnings. So again, the one that I didn't look at here is the cash flow statement. And here for a statement of return earnings, the fundamental equation here is the ending retained earnings is going to equal the beginning retained earnings plus net income. So again, that's that bottom line on the income statement minus any dividends paid out to shareholders. And so for example, here on our balance sheet, remember we had assets of 10,000, liabilities of 3,000. You'll recall we had owner's equity of 7,000 by definition, because it's the residual. And now we can see that that owner's equity can be broken out into two accounts here, contribute equity and retained earnings. So if the contributed equity to the firm was 2,500, and let's say at the beginning of the period, that would be, say, that would be at the beginning of the year, retained earnings were 3,000. Then over the period, the income statement told us that, that the company produced net income of 1,500. 
that net income is going to grow the retained earnings account minus any dividends paid out. But in this case, we're going to assume zero. So you can see retained earnings of three plus the net income of 1,500. That's this right here. So we may as well have beginning of 3,000 plus net income of 1,500 minus dividends of zero. Gives us at the end of the year, a new retained earnings account of 4,500. So each year, the net income is growing, hopefully, the retained earnings account. That 4,500 shows up here on our balance sheet as part of the right-hand side of the balance sheet. The contributed equity is the same. And we can see here that 7,000 breaks out into the contributed equity and the new retained earnings, which grew by the net income. So you can see now the linkage here, the income statement, that flow measure of earned revenue and incurred expenses, the difference there, that net income, is added to the beginning retained earnings, grows that retained earnings account, which in this case grows the owner's equity because it's a component of owner's equity on the right hand side of the balance sheet keeping the balance sheet in balance so that's the third fundamental equation or accounting equation for that third statement the statement of retained earnings this is david harper the bionic turtle thanks for your time